so good morning everyone today it is lecture number 2 uh, uh, and we will discuss about basic concept of probability so coming to outline of today's lecture these are these basic concept it may may look uh, simple to you but my suggestion is that try to understand these things in a, in a very deeper way don't leave any of the concept just try to don't and uh, one more thing to understand math mathematics in a better way what i used to apply so forget about what what you know about this just always start from zero and whatever things come to you try to understand and if you are understanding pure interaction definitely things would be uh, very interesting and later uh, whenever there are concerned that that kind of concept will come definitely you will get max uh, get a maximum application of that so that's where just forget about uh, history whatever things are going here try to focus on that and try to learn and if you are facing any problem let me know definitely i will try to make you understand in a better way so coming to outline of today's lecture so i have taken two outline one is basic concept of probability there i will talk about uh, that algorithmic or systematic approach of dealing with the uh, quantification of probability or measure of randomness or a study of randomness that uh, systematic approach uh, even in you, in your high school you might have already seen that uh, systematic approach it says that you are having a random phenomena uh, in that random phenomena what you do uh, one assumption you are putting that you are able to visualize all possible outcome then that means you are having uh, information about all possible outcomes so what are the possible outcome would be there associated with that random phenomena random experiment in order to quantify the randomness so uh, when you take together all the possible outcome that collection we are calling it sample space so once we are having a sample space simply you in one line you can say that sample space is what it is uh, talking about all possible outcome here uh, the word all is very important you have to focus on all possible outcome then that would be a sample space now further if you go in you change the word all to uh, some possible outcome then that uh, statement it will be what it would be event so event how you define it you you are just saying that some possible outcome it is not covering everything it is covering just a, a, a at moment uh, whatever things are coming to you some possible outcome so that that one is event that one is totally subjective nature whoever is going to attack that kind of uh, outcome it would fall in that kind of uh, event so that's where uh, all possible outcome is one important ingredient of uh, this uh, uh, basic concept of probability or, or simply you can say that uh, we are trying to do some probabilistic kind of modeling so we are we have already started a, a probabilistic modeling so it is one approach of probabilistic modeling so there uh, what is the first Im important ingredient of probabilistic modeling it is saying that we are having a uh, what R random experiment or random phenomena okay there we are introducing first ingredient as sample space that say that all possible outcome afterward uh, we try to focus on uh, we try to be more a specific then we are saying that some possible outcome then some possible outcome that leads to what event and further we will go we try to measure the probability with respect to that outcome and then there i will give a very simple kind of quantification as uh, what uh, one hierarchical approach that it says that uh, as a ratio number of uh, um, outcome that uh, in which the uh, in which a event is happening the number of of uh, fashion or number of way the, the event uh, one event uh, which is already mentioned there is happening divided by total number of all possible outcome so that uh, hierarchical approach it looks uh, uh, fascinating but if you put some assumption over that then it becomes very concrete kind of definition okay in a very uh, a small problem this definition there is no issue with definition but later you will go to find uh, application of this one you will face a problem suppose uh, just i am uh, just for basic purpose i am asking one question that uh, uh, everyone might be aware of uh, that uh, tossing tossing before any any kind of uh, uh, game generally that the, when two team are playing uh, like uh, if suppose cricket you are watching cricket then uh, and just focus on kohli virat kohli right now he is current captain of uh, indian cricket team so if you observe that most of time uh, he is unable to win the toss so due to that uh, he depends upon 
other opposite captain so why why such so based on that suppose uh, virat kohli he will uh, toss a coin and uh, in place of uh, head he will get tail then what will happen uh, several times then out of 10 toss he got uh, uh, three times head uh, uh, head in place of tail he asked for tail but in in place of tail he got head only three times head so what can can you see that uh, say that uh, that coin is not a uh, fair coin it is a uh, bias coin can can he can he claim or not what would be probability of getting tail there uh, just anyone respond just uh, suppose uh, that uh, uh, during that uh, toss process uh, uh, that we actually got uh, three times tail in the 10 toss three times tail what is meaning or simply you can say that in 10 con uh, consecutive matches he got three times tail in place of head you know what would be scenario what would be scenario of the, that coin Anyone can comment that? No, very wrong answer. That's a, uh, based on you. Uh, really, you you answer your answer is right up to that radical definition. It says that ratio of uh, number of uh, event uh, number of the event is occurring divided by number of total possible outcome. So based on that, you uh, answer it. But uh, from uh, uh, that, your approach is fine but if you go in long run then you you are wrong in long run so if you try to see the truthness of uh, this definition heretical definition that ratio it is talking about in long run that one is true at uh, that long run we are calling it law of large number that we will discuss in module 3 that we will discuss in module 3 okay so that long run in that may be true but if you in a small scale it may be false that's why uh, we need to put some kind of assumption various assumptions we need to put in order to make things accurate so that's why kolmogoro is coming here uh, his statement is very fruitful in order to understand uh, probability okay any further comment <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. Then, then I'm happy that you came to you know soon. Actually, I think a few people can comment over that after going to model three. So just in uh, here in probability, always be phrase. Try to answer from honesty with honesty. Whatever you know, just try to answer from there. So it is the best way of learning probability. Now, then second part I will in this uh, lecture I will talk about probability measure, how to measure and the law of probability further uh, how many uh, assumptions we are putting there in order to quantify randomness. So that things we will discuss in detail. Okay. So coming to basic concept of probability. So first I will, I will talk about uh, sample of space and uh, event and random phenomena. We will start with random phenomena and then we will introduce uh, sample of space. So coming to concept sample space what we do a random experiment is an experiment whose outcome we can't predict before the experiment is performed so before experiment is going to happen we, uh, before that we can't predict what would come okay so we do however know in advance that what are the possible outcome so that that assumption you may see here the second sentence it is very powerful sentence that it says that when you are performing a random experiment you must be aware that what are the possibilities but you you are not aware of that what would come you are not uh, so there are two statements one statement it says that you know that what are the possibilities among the uh, various possibility in that uh, occurrence of random experiment you know that what are the possibility that that things you are having that we are calling it exhaustiveness property if you try to later i will say, explain that but uh, you don't know uh, that uh, what would come you don't know you, uh, you are not a uh, you are not a god so you can't predict what would come so simply you are a human being so th from that perspective you can't predict what will come in the random experiment so that scenario is there in the random experiment okay so if you are having such situation for example if you flip a coin you know it will come up either head or tail you just do not know which of these outcome will occur in the given experiment you don't know you know you know that if you toss a coin you flip a coin either head will come or Tail will, tail will come but before experiment you can't say with 100 percent or with 100 percent same thing you can't predict that head will come or you can't predict that tail will come you can predict with some uncertainty 
then when uncertainty is coming that means it is a probabilistic phenomena so the, or random phenomena so that's way so that is the situation so the first ingredient of any probabilistic model is the specification of all possible outcome of a random experiment so that's why i told that that in in short this property we are calling it exhaustiveness of a random experiment that means we know about all possible outcome of a random experiment but we don't know which outcome will come in the coming experiment we don't know about that but we know that all possible outcome and the collection of all possible outcome we are calling it sample space sample space i will be very specific to notation so most of time i will take sample space notation omega capital this omega capital omega capital omega it is the uh, notation of sample space it is calling it it is the collection of all possible outcome of a random experiment so if you toss a coin what are the possible outcome head and tail so there are two element in in case of flipping a coin so that is the scenario i have taken many examples so coming to example of random experiment and uh, further exhaustiveness that means uh, recalling that what is what would be sample space so suppose we are taking two dice game so consider the random experiment of throwing one red dice and one blue dice and we denote uh, each outcome by uh, order pair ij where i is the outcome that come in the red die and j is the outcome that come that appears in the uh, blue die okay so it is order pair order is very much essential here or that's where bracket always represent order pair okay so uh, from if you uh, toss two uh, dice one is having uh, color red another one is blue and if you try to collect all the outcome then how many possible outcome you will observe 36 yeah very nice so here uh, the each out so uh, each point of the sample a space we are calling it sample point so here sample point uh, it is notation would be bracket here okay so you can uh, uh, trace out all the possible outcome what would be the first outcome would be don't call it first i don't know which would be first or second why you know uh, the not a sample space it is talking about set set is not having any order property anyone come first anyone come last so that's where uh, order i am not saying order simply i am saying that this one is one element one one then uh, for simplicity we can say that it is first element because if, uh, one is always coming first there is a well ordering property associated with a set of natural number that's way then we can say that one two likewise uh, 36 uh, sample point or some element would be there in the uh, sample space and last you can say that uh, i'm abusing some notation so just you can uh, relax those uh, there is no issue so last i am saying that but uh, here a uh, sample space is set so anything come any anywhere so in total simply you say that uh, there are 36 element in this sample space that means there are, there are 36 possible outcome in this random experiment what is the random experiment throwing a thro throwing two dice together so in that we can observe 36 uh, outcome possible uh, possible outcome and in uh, during in that process we are getting a sample space which is having 36 element and each element we can call it a sample point sample point you can give it name now we are taking another time so this this is situation of discrete uh, uh, discrete uh, situation it is because here point we are calling one two three point uh, three four five so that means uh, there is a bijection with set of natural number so that's where this is a discrete phenomena and when we are unable to see bijection of uh, uh, sample space with uh, uh, what we call it set, set of natural number that time it will lead towards what continuous phenomena such situ situation is coming in waiting time consider the random experiment of waiting for a bus that will arrive at a random time in the future suppose you are uh, just uh, uh, waiting for some bus at a particular uh, bus stop then uh, uh, that time it always moves in a continuous fashion 
so if you try to observe then that would be a continuum uh, what a continuous phenomena it would be continuous value that sample space the outcome would come in a continuum fashion yeah, suppose if you are waiting at a particular bus stop then one bus may come uh, just uh, point zero zero one second just after point zero zero one second and so uh, another bus may come uh, uh, even after uh, uh, 15 minutes or something like that so we don't know when bus will come because <laughs> Just, just assume that uh, uh, there are uh, enough amount of buses. So definitely uh, you will observe that waiting time happens in continuum in fashion. So in that perspective, what would be sample space? So sample space would be simply uh, you may go to uh, zero time. Zero time, it, it is your initial time. Uh, starting from zero time, it may go on, go, go on. So infinity is not a number. It simply say, say that uh, it is very big, something very big. We are unable to reach there. So that is the meaning of infinity. Infinity is, it is a symbol. It is not a number. If you try to understand infinity, infinity it is just a symbol. It says that it is something big that we can't uh, uh, reach. That is meaning of that. So, so sample space is coming that perspective in case of waiting time um, example where uh, bus may come any any time, any time like this way. So in that process, sample space would be this. Uh, here closeness at zero openness at infinity because infinity is not a number so this is the sample space for this experiment second experiment you can say that it is example number one this one is example number two any question till now if you are having any question you can ask otherwise i will go forward now third example i am taking it flight of bumblebee or simply you can say that b if you try to see the flight of uh, bumblebee, definitely uh, it is random in nature. Uh, you can't predict where it will go at just uh, huh, here. One thing is mentioned that here flight is function of time. It is function of time because with respect to time, uh, that bumblebee or bee is flying uh, uh, in a random fashion. So we can't predict where in uh, next time if say, we are seeing a bee at present moment at somewhere at some point at, at the next time, we don't know where it will go. So very random in nature, highly unpredictable. But don't worry, probability is giving a tool to approximate that uh, prediction. Approximation uh, we can we will learn in later uh, modules. So a bee is buzzing around, and we track its flight trajectory for five seconds. Uh, what possible outcomes are there in such a random experiment? What are the all possible? What would be sample of space? So what would be sample of space for this? Uh, uh, random experiment here random experiment is that and that flight of uh, b bumblebee or b so if you try to visualize the flight path of the bumble bumblebee it uh, geometrically it would look like this way zigzag very highly zigzag so if you try to position uh, try to uh, map position with respect to time then very zigzag kind of uh, graph you will get it so sometime uh, bumblebee is here uh, next time it may be here next time uh, like this way so very zigzag kind of thing situation you are getting it here so this is this is one flight uh, one path of the uh, bumblebee okay so if i'm asking one path it is that means one possible outcome it is one possible outcome it is given here so likewise if you consider this uh, definitely it is a random experiment that uh, flight of a bumblebee then if you try to find out what would be sample a space then sample a sp space in order to the as we have not yet discovered the secret of uh, teleportation their flight path cannot have any jump there would be no jump there would be continuity you know that uh, uh, if you try to observe b the it would be a continuous path continuous function it would be con continuous position would be a continuous function of time so the sample space for this experiment would be here you can say that uh, i might be a little bit uh, specific in sense that we are putting a continuum approach that uh, position happens to be a continuous function of time just avoid few uh, uh, problem so sample space simply it would be collection of all continuous function defined over the uh, this time period 0 to 5 second 0 second to 5 second so this is sample space is all continuous path simply when someone is saying that the path the continuous path it always happens to be a function from uh, interval uh, close and bounded interval to uh, a space or wherever uh, where you want to position where if you want 2d position it would be r2 if you want 3d position if you observe 3d movement of uh, this bumblebee 
then your codomain would be r3 if you would like to pour, go for four four dimensional it would be uh, r4 depends upon your choice where you want to observe the flight of bumblebee so if you try to make it planar then r2 and if you try to make it a space wise then it would be r3 so here sample space of this experiment would be what collection of all continuous function which is defined over this time interval 0 to 5 second okay so this is the sample space okay here this sample space omega it faithfully describes all possible outcome of this random experiment you can observe that we observe here it is already mentioned that we observe the trajectory of the flight of bumblebee only for 5 seconds so that's why uh, this one is already fixed here it is already fixed here okay so it is the sample space of this random experiment going further I will talk about uh, event. I told that uh, just for uh, understanding purpose, uh, uh, event take it, it, it is talking about some possible outcome. The meaning of just a uh, minor difference between all and some. So see the difference between all and some. If you are from linguistic, then you can also see that difference. So here, once we have defined all possible outcome of a ran random experiment, we should discuss what types of question we can ask about such outcomes so that means we are being more a specific once we have already seen a random experiment we are trying to be more a specific in that process that means we are going towards a specific a specific or particular event kind of approach so such such outcome okay this lead us to the notion of event informally an event is a statement for which we can determine whether it is true or false after the experiment has been performed okay so suppose if example if you are taking it uh, i haven't written it so just i told that event is some possible outcome so in lemon way in short way you can say that so same example i have taken it two dice consider the random experiment of throwing one red die and one blue die okay we denote uh, uh, one sample point ij as an order pair where i is coming outcome from the red die and j is the outcome in the face of uh, blue dye okay that come out now here we are defining event like this we consider the following event the sum of uh, numbers on the dice is seven sum of the number so that's where it is talking about some possible outcome it is not talking about all possible outcome see the uh, this statement event is always a very well it is a valid statement see it is event is uh, what is event it is talking about the sum of numbers on the dice is seven this events occur in a given experiment if and only if the outcome of the experiment happens to lie in the following subset what would be subset just before going to that subset i would like to ask what would be that this event tell me what are the element of this event anyone may respond Yeah, very nice i know everyone uh, might be aware of that but but just i want to see what is your approach so approach would be definitely it would start from uh, we know that uh, sum is seven so we will start with three four then it will go on okay i have to set this mouse it is very sensitive right now so here here i have already written it so it is I, Written. We are starting with 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, uh, 6, 1. There is a pattern. So uh, we should follow pattern in order to make things more uh, systematic. So this pattern looks fine. Okay. So this is the event of uh, event that numerically if you try to write in the form of uh, sample points, uh, this is the event. Okay. Definitely event is always a subset of the sample space. It is always a subset of the sample space. this okay this is the event so likewise you can take various example another example here uh, uh, what we can say that we cannot predict in advance whether this event will occur but we can determine whether it has occurred once the outcome of the experiment is known if outcome of the experiment is known we can uh, determine whether it uh, has happened or not some outcome if you observe some some outcome from the experiment that means we perform the experiment uh, we have already observed some trial of the experiment based on that we will try to determine the uh, probability of particular event particular event okay 
if that particular event contain the outcome that is already we have seen then uh, definitely it will talk about occurrence of the particular event so here i am taking another example uh, waiting time here we will define few event so waiting time it is talking about consider the random experiment of waiting for a bus that will arrive at a random time in the future so sample space definitely it will be zero to infinity now here what is the event event is talking about the bus comes within first hour so within first hours first hour what does it mean it, it is talking about uh, interval so, so event would be interval 0 to 1 this is the first hour this is the event just uh, this highlighted part is what it is event and it is already written here this is the event in this example likewise someone is waiting for uh, uh, someone will say that uh, what are the other possible event so here there are infinite event because why because sample space is infinite but in first case what was the uh, definitely uh, if set is finite then what are the uh, possible event tell me if uh, uh, how you can find uh, all possible event in a finite uh, sample space any idea <laughs> what actually i could not listen you what what you mentioned yeah, actually, uh, actually can't uh, say much about that your perception it is very simple actually you may try to think it from set perspective what is happening it is talking about uh, event is what it is just just see it here it is talking about subset of sample space so in order to calculate all possible outcome what is meaning of uh, all possible outcome it simply says that uh, try to find all possible subset of the given sample space so if you are having a set with n number of element what are the possible subset what would be all possible subset in set theory in high school you might have already seen that now that one is 2 to the power n so that is that yeah so that's where here n is what it is talking about finite number so that's where if you come to know your sample space is finite if sample space is finite then you can talk about all possible outcome that sample space is finite it is that means cardinality of that sample space is equal to n some fixed natural number then you can say that uh, this one is having 2 to the power n number of events possible event yeah uh, if your uh, sample space is infinite you can't say how many would be there even your sample space itself so for real number generally currently we use to introduce by c uncountable this one is uncountable number c so there it would be 2 to the power c then c c itself we unable to count then how can how can we say that about 2 to the power c that one so there is no such situation that uh, uh, we can count number of uh, events in case of uh, sample space when it is infinite okay but in case of finite we can count so that is the scenario so this this is the possible outcome we can say that so these are part of uh, uh, what we call it a combinatory like in permutation combination uh, in uh, high school you might have already gone through permutation combination so from there you can derive such things and uh, re really i would like to um, see all of you just recall those permutation combination in order to understand calculation of probability in a better way okay so i'm going further I will talk about uh, probability measure and uh, that probabilistic modeling uh, how we can measure probability and uh, uh, just uh, we have to summarize everything by saying that we are doing a probabilistic modeling and how in uh, probabilistic modeling what we do uh, how we approach things so just probabilistic modeling is it is a very systematic word in order to accumulate all things what we have already covered till now so coming to pro probability measure so after specifying the sample space we have till now we have done sample space we know about sample space we know about event uh, in a random experiment we know sample space that means all possible outcome we know event that means some possible outcome we know mm, these things okay after that we try to reason out something about measure measure prob um, probability measure so now we see how does a random experiment work so what you do what you do uh, you pick one outcome from this set of all possible 
outcomes that that uh, we are calling it sample space omega once this outcome is revealed to us we can check for an event a whether or not that event occurred in this realization of the experiment by checking the that uh, uh, outcome what we have already you have picked whether that outcome is in that event a or not if the outcome omega small omega is in the event a then we will say that uh, the event a occurred if it is not uh, uh, in the event a then simply we say that we don't know about whether a is occurred or not a, a may not may not uh, may not occur so that situation will come so this this is a checking uh, investigating um, way to uh, occurrence of uh, to find that whether event a is occurred or not so all these are very complex things so unfortunately we have no way of predicting which outcome you will pick before conducting the experiment so if if you suppose uh, someone is conducting a random experiment we can't say that one person will come and what will pick we can't say we can't predict in prior so we can't predict but we can measure uh, using some uh, some proper approach so we therefore also do not know in advance whether or not some event a will occur we don't know in advance in prior we don't know all those things so so in order to quantify all these to model a random experiment we will specify for each event a our degree of confidence about whether this event will occurs by assigning a number that we are calling it p of a that means probability of event a and we are putting a condition over this assigning assignment number that it number this number would be always between 0 and 1 including 0 and 1 always it would be 0 and 1 so we are just introducing probability measure which must obey some rules that in code our common sense about how random experiment works so probability is something more than common sense simply we are having a common sense then we are assigning assignment number and then that number we are and that assignment number is satisfying certain number of uh, assumption or properties and then we are calling that assignment number p of a is a probability to the event a p of a probability suppose if probability uh, that assignment number p of a is equal to 1 then we can say with certainty that that event will occur that means it is very determinic deterministic situation in this case a will happen every time we perform the experiment so in an experiment we observe that if a random experiment uh, we in if perform a random experiment there uh, one event is associated whose degree of confidence is equal to 1 then we can say that that event always occurs one example is sample space if you perform a random experiment if someone is asking what is the probability of getting sample space then definitely it would be always one because sample space is talking about collection of all possible outcome if you perform a, a experiment random experiment definitely it will say that performance of that experiment it will guarantee that at least one event outcome will come and if at least one outcome will come that uh, the occurrence of that one outcome is uh, talking about occurrence of sample space so that's where probability of a sample space is equal to 1 if you take a sub a subset of sample space and something uh, so if you try to perform a random experiment and that uh, outcome is not from the subset then simply you will say that uh, that uh, that subset is not occurring so probability it would be less than 1 so probability will decrease from 1 to if you reduce the, uh, your subset from sample space to a smaller uh, collection of outcome then definitely probability it will keep on decreasing and finally it will decrease up to what zero if you nothing is if you uh, you are not you don't have any uh, outcome then what will be probability of that it would be zero so that situation is coming if uh, you are having an event suppose a null kind of event null set kind of event and if then definitely it will have probability zero what does it mean we are also uh, know that if uh, probability of that event is zero it that means it is we are very much certain that a will not occur non occurrence probability equal to zero it is talking about non occurrence of the event a so a will never happen in any of experiment like uh, 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 anything and not no, uh, impossible thing just take impossible kind of thing some suppose uh, someone is saying that uh, one person will come and uh, try to hit uh, every ball to uh, out of the boundary so definitely that uh, there is no such kind of uh, player such uh, there is no such kind of person that who can hit every ball out of the boundary so that uh, that event is uh, totally null 
so that situation in in practical situation it, situation it is not possible so that situation you can say that now suppose if you are taking an event with probability 0.7 so that means yeah say that the event will occur in some realization of the experiment not in others that means in some portion that event will occur if you take outcome outcome is coming from uh, other out of the, that realization then simply uh, we will say that outcome uh, that event will not occur that means simply we say that we are 70 percent confident that that event will occur and 30 percent we can't say it. we don't know it may not occur so that's way that when number is coming between 0 to 1 it's talking about a realization concept that means some kind of uh, condition we are putting it going further uh, i will talk about probability law that means uh, we uh, I, I discuss about probability uh, measure that uh, assignment number p of a now when uh, when it become law when that assignment number will satisfy certain number of exams certain number of exemption then it become a law intuitively uh, intuitively this uh, specifies the likelihood of an outcome or any set of possible outcome or simply in simple way you can say that event or simply you can say that some possible out likelihood of some possible outcome so a probability measure is an assignment of the number p or p of a to every event a such that it satisfies the following exams or following assumptions first that that assignment number is always lies between 0 to 1 and that we are calling it degree of confidence also you can live in way you can say that it is a, always a non-negative number non-negativity you can say that second assumption it is talking about normalization that means if you take all collection of uh, all possible uh, outcomes that means sample space then definitely in that the happening of that if you perform an experiment then the, always it will say that uh, it will talk about occurrence of the sample space because every outcome is falling in that sample space. Definitely, probability of sample space would be always one. It is talking about normalization condition. Okay. Now, third condition, it is talking about mutually exclusive. So, second is talking about exhaustiveness or normalization condition. So, if, from, if you are coming from set theory approach, that normalization condition you are uh, uh, means uh, uh, it is talking about occurrence of sample space. That means that means uh, all possible. We know about all possible event associated with that sample space. That means uh, exhaustive nature. We know exhaustive nature. So, in set theory purpose, that uh, normalization you can translate it into exhaustiveness. Okay. Now, third property is talking about mutually exclusiveness. So, these two are very important word. You need to understand that. Uh, I always, I would like to say that, try to understand this. So, if A and B are two events and there is no common between, between A and B, that means A intersection B is 5, null set. Then, we can easily calculate total probability of A and B. That means probability of A union B, it would be just probability of uh, sum of the uh, corresponding probability. The probability of A uh, union B equal to probability of A plus probability of B. That means it is talking about uh, mutually exclusive e events. They add up their probability in order to get total probability. So all these are basic. You don't need to prove things. It, universally, you have to accept these are true. These three are true. And just based on this, if you try to conclude anything, always rely on these three. Always come come back to these three and use as much as possible. So all about mathematics. How much uh, uh, you know about uh, uh, how much idea you are having to apply the previous concept. So if you are able to uh, try try to draw any conclusion uh, conclusion from the problem, just use these things maximum in maximum way. Definitely your problem will be solved. So this is these three are very essential. Okay, and this uh, apart from uh, defining that assignment number, that assignment number is uh, have to satisfy these uh, three properties. Now, so uh, now question would be here. You all can ask one question: How we can calculate that uh, assignment number P of A? Very uh, simple question would come: How we can calculate? Then you can calculate it uh, through various approach. One approach that we told that that hierarchical definition. It is saying that probability of A, A we calculate it through ratio. That means we are talking about probability of A equal to number of times that A occurs, number of times that A occurs. Simply in short, I will write has has is talking about number of times that A occurs. Okay, has is talking about count. This notation might be 
clear to everyone divide by number of times all possible uh, collection of all possible outcome so that's why i'm putting it has of omega so this definition uh, this we are calling it hierarchical definition it this definition becomes a uh, interesting definition when it satisfy all these three property apart from this uh, so it is one way to calculate this assignment number p of one way so it is only feasible in case of uh, uh, what we call it when uh, our sample space is very small in that case these things are working fine so so these things are visible to calculate when when but uh, later we will go to calculate in different approach so i will talk about those things so one uh, simplest approach is like this way okay and uh, this is the probability law so uh, further we can generalize this uh, third assumption by saying that we are taking a collection of event which are mutually exclusive, pairwise mutually exclusive. Here, uh, this one is talking about, uh, you are taking a collection of event which are pairwise mutually exclusive. Then we can calculate the probability of union of all those events, how? Just by summing up, summing the respective probability. Just sum the respective probability of the event, you will get. Uh, so it is talking about, again, a generalization of mutually exclusive phenomena. So it is all about just generalization from three. So only these three law you need to understand, you need to visualize, you need to as much as if you have any problem, let me know and just tr try to understand these three are very important. Now question, one question you can, I told that one, one question you can uh, ask me that uh, uh, how we can calculate this P of A. So that, that one is different question. You can come up some uh, technique to calculate uh, P of A, that probability of A, but why? Because that, that would be a number. We need to know some numerical approach to calculate P of A. So that, uh, that, that things uh, you will automatically you will learn in uh, later uh, lectures. Okay. And, but uh, that assignment number, it becomes a uh, probability measure when that satisfies these three properties, then it becomes a probability measure. If there, there is some kind of failure, then simply you can say that, uh, no, it would be not a probability measure. Okay, coming to a uh, few more remark uh, for the probabilistic model. Intuitively, what uh, probability, if you try to go for intuitive approach, probability a study and compute and you can say that quantify randomness of any event. If we flip a coin many times, then the coin will come up heads roughly half the time. If you, this one is talking about log large number. You roughly many times you are flipping a coin definitely roughly we uh, with uh, uh, roughly we can say that with uh, based on some law that uh, or some uh, that uh, i told law of large number we, 50 percent chance is there head will come and 50 percent chance is there tail will come so that that is based on uh, law of large number thus we say that probably that the coin will come up head is uh, one half that means 0.5 more generally our common sense intuition about probability is in the form of frequency so that ratio uh, thing uh, uh, what i told so if you repeated a random experiment many times the probability of an event is the fraction of these experiment in which the event a occurs i told that when you tossing coin you suppose you are tossing coin 10 times and in 10 times three times you are getting head so simply from that perspective this uh, ratio approach you can say that probability of head would be 3 by 10 but that one is not true and three so in long run you will see that 3 by 10 or uh, then 5 by 10 or something like that finally it will converge to the probability will converge to 0.5 1 by 2 as we have seen the heuristic definition in term of fraction can lead to ambiguous conclusion this is why we do not define probability as frequency if you define probability in term of frequency it must have to satisfy the, those three law okay so instead we make an unambiguous mathematical definition of probability as a assignment number p of a that agree with all those three assumptions what i told that a b c again i have written so this one is talking about probability must that assignment number i am not saying probability i am saying that assignment number or probability measure it must between 0 and 1 and the if you uh, uh, take all possible outcome then the property it will sum up to one second property we are talking about normalization and third property it is talking about normalization also you can say that mutually exclusiveness so everyone remember that second property another name you can say that uh, mutually exclusiveness uh, sorry exhaustiveness second property is talking about exhaustiveness remember try to remember exhaustiveness so it is talking about exhaustiveness property and third one is uh, okay mutually exclusive exhaustive
okay this mouse is little bit sensitive i will just try to change the setting and uh, so third third property is talking about mutually exclusiveness okay mutually exclusiveness it is talking about so so these three are uh, main property of uh, probability measure being a uh, probability measure so uh, at last uh, if you bring all those uh, things together then we what what is meaning of that we are doing a probabilistic modeling say so we can say that a probabilistic model is a mathematical description of an uncertain situation in accordance with three ingredients first one is sample space second one is probability law third one is probability measure so all these three so if you, you are taking account all these three together then that means you are doing a probabilistic model geometrically you can see that like this way so you perform an experiment this is the experiment you perform an experiment then you are noting down all possible outcome that we are calling it sample space in that within the sample space we try to choose few some outcome oh, that some outcome one is calling event a another calling event b then we uh, uh, with respect to each outcome uh, each event we try to assign some number so with respect to the events, event a we have assigned this number p of a with respect to event b we have assigned this number p of b so all these when we are doing all these uh, things that means we are doing a probabilistic modeling so it is all about today's lecture regarding attendance just uh, mark your uh, roll number there in uh,